Welcome, I'm Michelle Crummel, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to get started using LaTeX. LaTeX is a document markup language, and it's used to create professional looking documents with consistent formatting. It's especially useful if you're typesetting mathematical notation. So it's great if you're writing a paper that contains mathematics, if you're creating tests and quizzes or typing up homework assignments. I use it for other things too, like creating slide presentations and even writing letters of recommendation. It has many, many uses. As a teacher, some of the main reasons I prefer using LaTeX over word processors, besides just how professional it, the output looks, is that LaTeX is cross-platform, it's backwards compatible, it produces PDF files that are small and can be opened on any device, and it's free, open source, and highly customizable. But before you get started creating your own LaTeX documents, you have a decision to make. Do you wanna work and store your files online or offline? The advantages of working online are that you don't have to download, install, or update any software onto your computer. So you can get started right away. You can even work collaboratively in real time using shared documents. The advantages of working offline, on the other hand, are that you have complete control over how you organize and store your files, and you don't need an internet connection to work on your files. Both options work really well. It just depends what's going to be best for you. So I'm going to start by showing you how to work online because for a beginner, that's probably the fastest and easiest way to get started. So to work online, we're going to use a website called Overleaf. So you can just do a Google search for Overleaf or you can go right to overleaf.com. Now I already have an account set up. So when I went to overleaf.com, it automatically logged me in. But if this is your first time visiting Overleaf, you will want to create an account and you can do that using an email address. So because I don't have any files created so far in my account, this is the screen I'm seeing when I log in. Once you create at least one tech file, you're going to see a different screen when you first log in and you'll see a list of all of your files. But for now, we're going to click on create first project and we want a blank project and you're going to have to come up with a name for your project. I'm just going to call this tutorial one. So when we create a new project in Overleaf, it's automatically going to populate some code for us. This is really, really just the basics here. And we can see that we have sort of three windows here. On the far left, this is going to show us our file structure. The name of our tech file is main.tech. And then in the middle here, we have the place where we're going to be typing our code. And then over on the right, we have our PDF output so we can see what our final document is going to look like. So just a couple of things to point out here. When you make any changes to the code and you want to see what they look like in the output, you are going to have to click recompile. When you make changes over here, it's not going to automatically update on the right. You do have to hit recompile. And generally, if you're not working in Overleaf, you're not going to get this sort of starter template here. You're just going to have an empty slate to work with. Now, if I try and compile right now, I'm probably going to get an error because there is no code. Let's see what happens. Yeah, so it's not giving us just a blank PDF. It's actually coming back with an error and saying that it can't compile the code. And that is, of course, because we don't have any code. So let's just do some really basic um, code in here in Overleaf. And then I'm going to switch over and show you how you can work offline. That's my preferred method. And that's what I'm going to be using in my future tutorials. So to start our document, we're going to hit backslash and we want to make sure that we are always using the backslash and not the forward slash. So the backslash is starting our command and then I want document class. Now, as I start typing document class, you can see that it's kind of guessing what I'm going to be typing and I can now just click on that to complete the command, or I could have just continued typing it out with my keyboard. So we have document class, then we have a pair of square brackets, followed by a pair of curly brackets. And we have to type something in these brackets. 
This is part of the code. So in the curly brackets at the end, we're going to define what kind of class that we're using. And for us, it's going to be an article. Now that doesn't mean we're writing an article like a newspaper article, but that is just the name of the class, the type of document that we are creating. There are other document classes that you can use. For example, if we had entered Beamer there, we would be creating slides, almost like a PowerPoint presentation. If we typed exam there, then we have a different type of class where that I use for creating tests and quizzes. But most of the time, I use article. Now the square brackets, these are for optional arguments. So I could actually delete the square brackets and not use them at all. I could even just leave them there blank with nothing inside. But here we can type some options. So one of the things that we can type in here is the um, font size. So I think the default is 10 point. I'm not sure. I always use 11 points. So now I can't even remember now what the default is. But if we want to use 11 point instead of 10 point or 12 point, then we can type that. The PT stands for point and that's going to change our font size. Now if I try compiling right now, I have some code here, right? I suspect I'm still going to get an error. Yeah, I'm still getting an error because I haven't really started my document yet. There's no real content in here. So that's like the bare minimum that you need to declare before you actually begin your document. The next thing we're going to type is backslash begin and then in curly brackets document. So again, it's anticipating what I want. I can just hit enter and it will fill in for me, or I could have continued to type it out on my keyboard. Now, when I hit enter, notice not only did it give me begin document, but it also gave me end document. So this is a command that comes in a pair. It's got a begin and an end. If you type backslash begin document and you forget to type backslash end document, your file will not compile. So it knows when it sees a begin to be looking for a matching end. So we want to make sure and do that. And it's a good idea to go ahead and just type the ending command and then move your cursor back in between and, and type the rest of your content so you don't forget. And let's do just something really basic like hello. And I'm going to compile, recompile and see what we get. So we do have something now, something on the screen. You can see that not everything I typed in the code is showing up on the screen. The commands aren't going to show up, but the text itself is. And we can use the color coding to kind of give us an indication of what's what. So the text that I typed is colored black, whereas the commands, the backslash document class, backslash begin, backslash end, those are blue. So we can distinguish between them. So let's type a little bit more than that. This is my first LaTeX document and recompile. It's a good idea to compile frequently because if you wait for too long before you compile, you may end up with five or six errors and then it's very difficult to go back and figure out exactly where the errors happened. You, it, ideally, you would only want you know one error to deal with at a time. So it's, it is a good idea to compile frequently and that way you can catch any errors right when they, when they happen. All right, so hello, this is my first LaTeX document. And you may have noticed, if you've been kind of looking at things online, that the, the word LaTeX is often typeset in a very particular way. It's kind of got a special font, if you will, to make it look a certain way. And we can very easily accomplish that here by putting a backslash in front of LaTeX. Now you do have to spell it exactly how I spelled it with a capital L a lowercase a, a capital T, a lowercase e, and a capital X. So let's recompile and see what happens. Now, actually, this doesn't look great. I mean, it's nice that uh, the word LaTeX is typeset correctly, but there's no space between the X and the word document. So to get the space in there, I'm going to just put another backslash at the end of that command. Okay, and that fixed that right up. Now, you might be wondering why it's spelled L-A-T-E-X and I keep saying LaTeX and not LaTeX. 
the letter at the end of the word is actually not an X. It's actually the Greek letter chi. And the Greek letter chi sounds more like a K than it does an X. It doesn't sound exactly like a K, but that's the closest, I would say, letter in our alphabet to what it sounds like. So it's a it's like a hard K sound. It's not an X sound at the end. A lot of people say latex instead of latex. Both are correct. It's just a matter of preference. So there we are, we have just a really basic document that we've gotten started here. And I do want to do a little bit more with this to explain, especially like how line breaks and some very basic format formatting works. But I'm going to go ahead and switch over now to working offline and show you how to do that. If you have lots of LaTeX files like I do, I mean, I have thousands and thousands of LaTeX files that I create. Um, I prefer to be able to store them on my hard drive. If I'm working in Overleaf, everything kind of gets, uh, let me go ahead and, and show you before we leave. I'm going to uh, hit this up arrow to go back to kind of this main screen here. And if I list all my projects, I only have this one that I created, tutorial one. But as I start creating more pro projects, you're just going to see a long list of files here. I like to be able to put things in folders and subfolders and in some cases sub subfolders and move things around on my com computer to store things th the way that I want. So that's the one downside I personally find with using Overleaf is just the file structure and how you store and find things. Now you can tag your files, which does allow you to filter things and make it easier to find. So instead of having a list of a hundred files, you know, maybe you can narrow it down by, by tags and that does help a bit. So if you do want to work offline, you are going to need to install some software on your computer. And there are two pieces of software that you need to create LaTeX documents. You need a LaTeX distribution, and then you need a text editor. So the LaTeX distribution is what is going to turn your code into some kind of output file, like a PDF file. The text editor is just what you use to type the code. And there are all kinds of text editors, right? You can even just use Notepad, something really basic as a text editor to type your code. It's important when you're installing these uh, two pieces of software that you do so in the correct order. Install the distribution first. You need to install your LaTeX distribution first. So I get um, quite a few comments of people asking for help and saying, you know, they're they're trying to compile their first file and it's not working, they're getting errors. It's really important that you install your distribution first, so that's up and running, and then install your text editor and try using your text editor. Okay, so what you what are you, what should you install? Well, there's lots and lots of options, and then your options are gonna be different based on whether you are a Windows PC user or a Mac OS user. So if you have a Windows computer, then my recommendation is to install MCTEC as your LaTeX distribution. You're going to do that first. And then to install TechMaker as your text editor. Now MCTEC, when you install it, does come bundled with its own text editor, and you can use that. I just don't find it as user-friendly as TechMaker. TechMaker is so wonderful for people who are starting out with all of the nice options and, and the way that it color codes things and the way that you can create macros. I really love TechMaker. And even though I'm not a beginner, I, that's still my go-to program for editing LaTeX code. If you are a Mac user, I'm a Mac user, uh, then you want to install MacTech for your LaTeX distribution and TechMaker for your text editor. Okay, so again, please install your distribution first. So that's either MCTech or MacTech. And then once that is installed, you can install the text editor. And all of this is absolutely free to download, install, and use. So here I am in TechMaker. Right, so because I'm on a Mac, I've got MacTech installed as my LaTeX distribution. Now, MacTech is not something that you would ever like click on and open. It just works in the background. The text edit editor is what you're going to interface with. So I don't have to worry about MacTech or creating a shortcut, um, you know, to it or anything like that. You can once you have it installed and it's working, you can just completely ignore it. But TechMaker, my text editor, is what. I am going to use to create my documents and type my code. 
So right now I'm in TechMaker. Now I, this isn't a, a fresh install, so I'm not sure that my screen looks exactly what like what you will see when you first log in. It's possible that um, that you have let me see this structure thing turned on here. Uh, I'm just clicking through some of these. Right now, what I'm seeing looks more like what we saw in Overleaf, where you've got some. Um, information over here. I mean, there's nothing here yet because we haven't created anything, but some uh, file structure information over here. And then in the middle is where we will be typing our code. And then over here on the right is where we will be viewing our PDF. But to save on some screen space, I really don't need to see the structure tag uh, tab. So I'm going to turn that off. And then my messages log, I mean, it's, I can turn it off. It's going to automatically come back up when I compile. So it's not that important. The PDF viewer, I do want to be able to see my PDFs as I work. So I will leave that showing. Now we don't see anything because we we're not actually working in a file at the moment. So the first thing we're going to do here is to create a file. Actually, the first thing we should do is look at our preferences and, and make sure that we have some good options selected. So I'm going to go into TechMaker. Sorry, that's just cut off. Um, you can't see that, but if you go to your, your menu here, click on tech maker and preferences. And I think it's different on the Mac version. If you are on a windows PC, you might have to go to like preferences or options, but somewhere in here, you should be able to pull up the window that I'm seeing right now. So it might be called options or it might be called preferences based on whether you have the Mac version or the windows version. Okay. So what in this first screen, for this uh, commands tab, you want to make sure that you have this box checked right here. PDF viewer, we want to embed the PDF. That's what's going to allow us to see the PDF on the right and the code on the left. So we want to check that box. I'm using my built in viewer to view the PDFs. And then you also want to check this box down here, launch the clean tool when exiting TechMaker. That's really useful. When you create LaTeX documents and you close your document, you're going to see a lot of files that are created in that process. You have your tech file, you have your PDF file, and you have like log files and a bunch of other files. And, and really the only ones that you are going to need are the tech file, which is, you know, your source code and then your PDF, your output. So just those two files. So if you click launch the clean tool, it will automatically delete all of those like helper files and make your, just your folder structure and navigation so much easier to, to deal with. If we go to quick build, you want to make sure that you've selected PDF LaTeX plus view PDFs. If your intention is to create PDF files. Under editor, you can change some of these options if you like. I normally don't have my font size this large, but for the purposes of the video, I want you to be able to see what I'm typing more clearly. So I increased that. I usually have it about 16 word wrapping. I, I recommend that you do keep that on and com completion. If you like that, that's if you start to type a command, it's going to suggest what it thinks you, that you're trying to type. So you can just hit enter and then show line numbers is also really helpful. Um, because when you get error messages, sometimes you can look at the line number and go right to that line number and try and figure out what the error is. Back up your document every 10 minutes. You can turn that on if you like. I, I don't have any particular reason why I did not have it turned on. Let's see, everything else looks pretty good. Shortcuts, these are just keyboard shortcuts that, that you probably don't wanna worry about when you're first starting out, but you might wanna take a look at those as you get um, more comfortable with this. Okay, so let's create our first document. Now you do have to actually create a document. So I'm going to click on new here, or you can use the menu and, and click on file new. Now this new document here, it says untitled. We haven't saved it yet. So I haven't actually created anything. And even if I type some code and try and compile it, I'm going to get an error message. You have to save the file first, name it and save it first before you're going to be able to compile it. So don't skip that step because that can be frustrating. You're wondering why this is not working. You actually have to save the die. It's not enough just to say I'm here. I'm creating a new file. You actually have to save it. 
So file, let's save this. And I'm just going to call this tutorial one, tutorial 01. Now, one thing I want to stress here is that you should never use spaces in your file names for your tech files. Don't use spaces. If you don't like your words all running together, you can do something like a hyphen. Hyphens are fine. If you want to do that, you can do an underscore. If you want to do that, like if you have want to put multiple words in your title, um, I usually do an underscore when I name my files, but do not use a space. So I'll just keep the underscore in here. And the file extension is going to be .tech, but that's, you know, it's, that's going to happen by default. So I don't really have to type the .tech when I am naming that. So I'm going to just open up that folder and show you what I've just created. Okay, here we go. So this is my file that I just created, tutorial01.tech. And you can see that there aren't any other files in this folder. So let's go ahead and recreate just the basic code that we had when we were using Overleaf. So backslash document class, and I'm gonna fill that in. I think we had 11 point, it's an article and then backslash begin document. And we have our end document. And then we said, hello, this is my first LaTeX document. Now to compile this, we see that we don't have a recompile button like we did in Overleaf. I'm going to click on this arrow to compile the code. And it used to be I just clicked on this arrow and it would run both of these. I'm not sure what my issue is at the moment, but it's it's making me click both arrows, like over here to compile and then here to view the PDF. This isn't generally the way I do it. The way I generally do it is to just hit F1 on the keyboard. So um, as I'm working throughout these tutorials, if you wonder like how, how does it seem to be refreshing so quickly, you didn't see me come up here and press on the arrow, it's because I just hit F1 on my keyboard. That's a really fast way to do it. Oh wait, I think I do know why that's not working quite right. So the PDF LaTeX will compile the code and then view PDF is going, to, is going to refresh the PDF so we can view it over here. But if I wanna do both of those things at once, what I actually wanna select here is quick build so that when I click on this arrow, it's going to do whatever I have saved in quick build. And if we go back to our preferences, quick build is right here. I have PDF LaTeX plus view PDF in my quick build. So when I choose quick build, it's going to do both of those two things. And then while we're in here, um, I'm going to go ahead and uncheck this backup every 10 minutes. And the reason I'm going to uncheck that is because if I leave that on, then not only am I going to be creating a tech file and a PDF, but I'm also going to be creating a back BAK file and I just don't want to have all of that stuff in my folders. It's absolutely not a big deal if you want to leave it on there and have backup files in your folders. That is perfectly fine. So here's what we have so far. Hello, this is my first LaTeX document and we can fit this to the width so it's a little easier to see. Uh, we can you know zoom in or out, fit it to a full page. And so I'm going to continue to work in TechMaker, but if you are more comfortable working in Overleaf, you don't want to hassle with trying to get the software installed and up and running, that is perfectly okay. You can still type the same code that I'm typing and your output should look exactly the same. I'm going to go back to fit width so we, we can see this a little bit better. So it's not too small on your screen. And let's move on. So I have, you know, one line typed here. Next, I want to type a little bit of math. So I'm going to say a rectangle has side lengths of x plus one and x plus three. So let me hit return and type that out. And because this is in a sentence, I know that it would look better if I used parentheses around the x plus one and the x plus three. So let me do that. And let's compile and 
see how that looks. So again, you can use the arrows up here. I'm just gonna hit F1 on my keyboard and this is what we have. Now, this might look okay to you. It doesn't look that great to me. There's a couple things I wanna point out. The first thing you might notice if you're used to working with a word processor is that a rectangle has side lengths of x plus one and x plus three is not on a new line. It just continued at the end of the first line. And when we look at the code, that's not what we might expect to happen because in, in a word processor, when you hit return right here, then the output actually shows that you hit return right there. And that's not gonna happen here with our code. Our code um, is only going to create a line break if we tell it to create a line break. And there are two ways to create line breaks. And the same thing is true in a word processor. There's two ways to create line breaks. You can do a soft return, you can do a hard return. So a, a hard return is going to start a new paragraph. If I want a hard return, what I wanna do is to just insert a blank line in between hello, this is my first LaTeX document, and then the next sentence. So if I leave a blank line in between those two sentences, then the compiler knows to insert a hard return. So let's compile, recompile that. And now we can see that we did in fact get a hard return. So a rectangle has side lengths, blah, blah, blah. That is the second paragraph now. That's a hard return. If you want a soft return, so let me go back here. If you want a soft return, then at the end of your line where you want the line break, you type two backslashes, okay? So we will compile that. And now we can see that we got a, a new line for a rectangle has side lengths of. However, this looks a little bit strange, right? It looks different than what we saw before because a rectangle is starting further off to the left than hello. This is a soft return, so it didn't create a new paragraph, and therefore the line is not indented. So by default, I haven't typed much code, granted, but by default here, new paragraphs are going to be indented. So the hello is indented, a rectangle is not indented because it was just a soft return, it's not a new paragraph. Now. You can do something like this, but it's it's not preferred. What's gonna happen if I do this? Let me turn on my messages log. Oh, it actually didn't mind it. Okay, I was expecting it to not like the combination of the soft and hard return there, but it seems to be okay. I like having the space in my code because it makes it easier you know, for me to go back and find things versus this where everything just kind of runs together. Um, but you can decide which one you like better, a soft return or a hard return there. And you, there are also ways that you can turn off the indenting because remember, whether you do a soft return or a hard return is gonna affect the way that your paragraphs are indented or your lines are indented. So let's go ahead and do a hard return, right? These do seem like they're probably separate paragraphs. We'll update that. I'm just using F1 to recompile. And there's still an issue here, something that's okay, but it's not great. And that is that the X that I typed doesn't look like math. It just looks like the letter X as if I had typed a word with an X in it. So when we type variables in math, typically we want them to be italicized so they look like variables. And that's gonna happen automatically as long as we tell the compiler that, hey, this is math, it's not text. So we're going to use something called math mode. To enter math mode, you type a dollar sign to start math mode, and then another dollar sign to end math mode. And you can see that the color changed when I did that. When I typed that first dollar sign, everything after the dollar sign turned green. So math mode, things are gonna be green. And then when you end math mode, everything that's outside of math mode is gonna go back to its normal color. So the word and is black, that's text mode, okay? So math mode, text mode. And I want this X plus three to be in math mode as well. So I'm gonna type dollar signs around the X plus three. And let's recompile and we can see the difference visually. Now that X is italicized, the spacing is a little nicer because it knows that it's math and that it needs to space things in a certain way to make everything look uniform. 
All right, I'm going to add some more to this. I'm going to add another sentence. So we have a rectangle has side lengths of x plus 1 and x plus 3. I'm going to say the equation a of x equals x squared plus 4x plus 3. gives the area of the rectangle. So I want you to just anticipate what's going to happen when I compile. What do you think this is going to look like? So I'm going to hit F1 to compile. And I have encountered my first error. OK, I can see that below here. These things are popping up in red. Something has gone wrong. Something's wrong on line six and line seven. And it's kind of giving me an indication. It says missing dollar sign inserted, right? It didn't actually insert it for me, um, but that is a, a, a clue for me of what went wrong. Oh, I probably forgot a dollar sign somewhere. So a of x equals x squared. Now the letter a, the letter x, like those could be text. So that's not what caused the issue. I think it was this symbol right here, this caret symbol. Uh, is only going to work in math mode. It's not going to work as text. So I'm going to put my equation in math mode by typing dollar signs around it, and now we should be OK. So again, we see uh, that the paragraphs are indented. Now that, now that the paragraph is long enough to wrap down to another line, we can see the way the indenting is working here. So things are not great, right? This is okay. It's in math mode. The math actually looks good, except for the fact that a of x equals is on one line, and then the rest of the equation is on another line. So that's not great. If you want to make sure that to, um, keep your equation on a line, you can put curly brackets around it. And now when I recompile, it's going to protect that for me. So a of x equals x squared plus 4x plus 3 all got pushed down to the next line. OK, so looking pretty good. Still, like if I, I mean, I'm still not that happy with it. I think there should be some space between the paragraphs, right? But, you know, we're just talking about the basics right now. So the next thing I want to tell you about is the difference between, there's kind of two different math modes. There's displayed math mode, and then there's inline math mode. If you use displayed math mode, whatever is in your displayed math mode is going to be on its own line. So we often see this in math textbooks where equations are, are put on their own line. And to enter displayed math mode, all you have to do is type two dollar signs to begin displayed math mode, and then two dollar signs to end displayed math mode. So let's recompile. And now we see that the, the math in displayed math mode got centered on its own line. And there's some nice spacing there to separate it from the text. And then the text just continues after that. The, it, it's, this is still happening like within a paragraph versus inline math mode, like the x plus 1 and the x plus 3, those just appear in line with the text. OK, so we've covered some basic information. Let's go ahead and I'm going to close this and then just show you now what I have in my folder where I created my tech file. OK, so if we navigate back to the folder where I created and saved my tech file, now I see there are actually two files there. There's the tech file that ends with .tex, and then there's the PDF file. So the tech file is our code. And here we can just see what that, what just the text, the code itself looks like. There's a little preview of that. And then here is the PDF. So that's not all fitting on the screen. Let me make that a little smaller. Uh, and there we go. Right, so that is the PDF document that I created. Check the description below for links to the files I created in this video, as well as links to the software that I recommend using. In the next tutorial, we'll look at how to typeset commonly used mathematical notation using LaTeX. Please like and subscribe below if you found this content helpful. Thanks for joining me today, and until next time, happy coding. Mm -hmm.